we'll be showing electrical clearance design checks with an imported Revit substation. We're going to take a Revit substation, import it into Inventor using normal Autodesk methods. And then once it's in Inventor, we are going to apply the P4I, Physical for Inventor, electrical clearance design checks. We're going to place the imported Revit model, demonstrate the link between the Revit model in Inventor, prepare the Revit model in Inventor for P4I design checks, and we will run the design checks. Okay, here is a simple substation in Revit. And you can see the spacing between the lightning masts. And we can see the equipment is very simple in this station. Switches and insulators, CCDTs and such in foundations. So we have structures, we have everything we need in this model. This is only the high side. It's only the, the high voltage side of a station. And what we're going to do, we're going to bring this in, into Venture. And over here we have three, I'm on a 3D view. I've created a 3D view that I want, and that's how I have it set up. I'll go into my inventor. And what we do is this is imported already. And what we do, we bring this in, we bring in the Revit RBT file. So as an example, you would come up to assemble place, place imported CAD file. When you place imported CAD file, you select the RBT. And with that, you'll get an edit window. So I'm going to edit this import and I'll go ahead and edit. What we want to make sure is that we have a reference model. So you would select reference model. If you select convert model, that would be a broken link and the two would not be linked together. In this case, it's a linked file. If an object moves in inventor, you'll get a lightning bolt or anytime the Revit is saved, you'll get a lightning bolt. If you come down here, you can see the view I selected to bring in, and I selected all groups here. I don't need to select all groups, but in this case I did. And with that, you would say, okay. It is then, then you can place it at zero, zero, or you can simply go up to your ground and root and ground and root your model if that's what you want. But it's as simple as that. And in this case, that's exactly what I did. I ground and rooted it. So if we look at our, our model here, it's kind of like a simplified part coming in. And you can see that I have it, um, what is it, four inches, 100, 100 centimeters or something up and flush and flush to these constraints. So that's the grounded item. And you can see it's a little bit offset, but that's just the way the Revit was created. What we can do then, I'll show you, I'm going to move a mast and we're going to move it in Revit and it will show up in Inventor. So let's go into Revit. I'm going to take this mast. I have a number here. I'm going to change this from 40,000 millimeters to 30,000 millimeters, and I'll hit enter. And now it's moved, and I'll save this. Now I come into Inventor, and you'll see a lightning bolt placed up here in a lightning bolt in the browser. I update, and this mast here should move. So I'm going to update this, and you'll see it working. It's rather slow in changing and updating your Revit inventor links. Okay, that took almost two minutes and you can see that the post has moved. So if I wanna bring it back, I can simply just bring it back again and come back into my Revit model and I can move this. Anything attached to the inventor item from Revit will move with that change. So I'll come back here. I'll save that location. Come back into Inventor and I can update again. Okay, with that, you can see that that post was returned. If you have anything that is deleted in the Revit file, it will be deleted in the 
in venture file if you replace and put add something new it will show up in the inventor file and may need to be treated for design checks or lightning protection whatever tool you're using with p4i we're going to run some design checks and we're going to make sure we know that we have a document on design checks and this design check should be mostly followed it's a it's a decent document there's a couple little differences in here where we uh, we set and identify parts because the SDS uh, design check checks for equipment works in the part world. This is running in the assembly world. So there's a little bit difference going on here, mainly because the imported Revit file behaves like a simplified part. So it's a little bit different. So what we do is when we look into our parts, and let's look at our components here. When we have uh, an um, uh, insulator, we can identify an insulator. So I'm going to come up to the design checks tool. And I'm going to show insulator. So it's identifying all the insulators, not only all, all of the insulators, but also all the equipment as a, an insulator. And this we need to do for an imported Revit file because of the way it's imported. SDS will need to upgrade and modify this specifically to have more um, flexible type of selection for our equipment in the future. Right now, this will still work for design checks, uh, but it should be refined. If we look at our structures, I'm going to turn on the structures. In this model, you can see all the structures are lit up and identified, and it all has to be done manually for selecting the insulators, select the instruct that the structure, um, all has to be done in this assembly. If you look at the way the model was created, the structure is part of the base of the switch. So the switch doesn't have a base and they made that into the structure. So that's an odd situation. If you look here, the switch mechanism should be called a structure as well. So when I say a structure, all the structure is grounded in the considered a grounded item. So when I come in here, I'm gonna say select structure. And I'm going to select this ident this piece, hit escape, and now that is structure and grounded. So that's assuming it's a grounded item. When I say something is an insulator, it's going to identify that as an insulated equipment. So everything you see there is going to be identified as insulated. And we're going to run our design checks for phase to ground in this manner. The design of the equipment should be passed because it was designed to pass for the voltage that it's rated for. When I come up here and we're going to look at the phasing, if I come up the phasing, you can see the phasing is coming down with the wires down to this point. So the cabling is coming down in here. That needs to be selected for each one and you come through with selection and you select that phase. So if I wanted to select that, these fittings, these fittings are just blocks here. I would come up here and hit select, select the block, select the block and the block and escape. And now that phasing is selected. Once you select your items, you want to save. I'll say done and save. Now that we have our, ident our identifications of our phasing, we have identification of our parts, identification of our structures, what we need to do is add a transformer. In this case, what we do for this case is add a false transformer. It's just a IPT block. You can see the block is here. And I'm going to open this block up. And in here, we have it set to be a, a transformer. So I can look up in our SD model editor. It's called a power transformer. And the voltage is set here. 
So when, when we run our SVS design checks, it's, going, it's on the high side, it knows to check it to the 161 volts. There's nothing else I need to do, do in here. I'm just calling it a transformer block just so we have it in our model. I'll close this. I can also view that from equipment design data. So let's go look at this. I can open that up and I can see that transformer and I have the settings here. So I can see it from both ends. With that transformer in there, when we start up our substation design tool, we can, we can re review this um, voltage setting in here. Voltage is 69 kV, spacing is 25 to 31. And that is set in the database. That's a configurable, um, configurable values in, in the database. So we have everything set and now we can run our design checks. All right, on the design checks page, you can see we have phase to ground clearance. That's uh, live to ground. We have phase to phase clearance and that's obviously phase to phase. And we have fence safety clearance. We also have a toggle tool that's not gonna work for us today because we've uh, identified our uh, equipment as in insulators for, for the present time. So we're gonna run phase to ground clearance. So we're gonna hit this button and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, so the um, phase to ground check was completed. We'll go look at the results. I'll expand the results and we can and we can sort the results. So we see the two part names that were checked. We see the voltage level that it was checked based on. And we see the uh, separation required. So if I go show on the first one here, we should be able to see what two items were checked. If you look, it's the cable to the switch mechanism there and it's it's 76 inches and the minimum required is 58. If we sort on the pass fail you can see it's failed in several spots so maybe we should look at these spots and see what it is. We'll see if it's a true fail. Uh, sometimes it's a false fail because of uh, the way something was modeled and in this case, it's showing the mechanical switch is in violation. With the wire here, see the wire is too close to that switch, but that switch wouldn't be energized in this case because the switch is open. See what else failed, same idea. Yeah, this one, same idea, all, all, all three phases failed on that. So that, that could very well be a false fail because it's not energized. We can also sort by a narrow, uh, by the separation distance. This is the closest one is 62 inches on the 58. So let's go see what's on there. And that's this one here. So that's the, the, uh, the power going to the C CCVT there and it's close enough to the um, switch that it is close to failing, but it does not. And we could search for any one of these. When you see the parts, you can search in Inventor and find what, what these parts are for a reference. This can be copied to clipboard and you have a record by placing it in Excel or Word or whatever your choice is. I'm going to say done, and then we're going to run the other one. We'll run phase to phase clearance check. So we're going to run this one. It often runs a little faster than the um, phase to ground or uh, live to ground check. So we'll, we'll let this run. Okay, the phase to phase clearance is complete. We're going to come over to results and you can sort on the separation distance, just like what we've done, done before. You can see this one is fairly close. So we want to look at this one. If I highlight it, uh, we don't really see it all that well. I can barely see it on mine. I'm just going to point out a couple of things to help highlight. One is you can come up to view and go to options and make sure under colors, you have enable highlighted colors. The other thing is you can take this, I'm going to take this guy here 
and right click I'm going to copy and I, uh, copies the whole line so now I'm going to put it in my search tool I'll copy that whole line put it there but I only need the one value and there it is so now I can right click find in window and there it is so we are checking on that so now I'm going to show you can see these two phases are a little bit close 77 so we want to make sure that we have those cables trained so they don't have interference by chance three or four inches here and it's uh i don't know if these are how how much they're going to wave around in the in the weather so we can see that those two pass if we want to look at any other ones we can look at some other ones and they're down here i can see it highlight and you can see those two are checked so it's going to look at phase to phase throughout the whole model Everything passes in this. We expect it to pass, but uh, it's good to check. You can copy the clipboard, and otherwise we're done.